Hey guys, today I'm here with Sonia Simon, Chief Content Officer and co-owner of Blog Copy Blogger here in the US, one of the biggest websites uh, that teaches people how to make content marketing. And Copy Blogger just don't, I mean, it's just not about teaching, but it's also about providing tools for them. I mean, if you, some of people know, some of people don't, but Coffee Blogger is the one of the owners, uh, the owner of Genesis, the, one of the most sold um, frameworks mm -hmm. in WordPress, have more than 100,000 clients uh, at this point, and maybe at the time that you're looking at this video, watching this video is gonna be more multiple, multiple 100,000, so it's one of the greatest uh, and most uh, famous tools and content um, properties that I ever, I ever uh, came to know about. And I have Sonia here. Sonia is a <laughs> co-owner, and it's great to have the opportunity to talk to someone which I call the queen of content oh, marketing. I love, that. I love it. <laughs> so before we actually get this, Sonia, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. And I would like to, if you could, you know, some people know copy bloggers, some people don't. But would you actually start telling a little bit about how? Copy Blogger came to me. How did it, how was it born? You know. Yeah, Copy Blogger started as a blog, a normal blog. One writer, his name is Brian Clark, um, and he was a he was a businessman. He was a he was an attorney, and he sold real estate. And he learned over you know trial and error how to use content to sell. So he used content to sell real estate. He used content to sell um, legal services and other kinds of professional services. Um, and he started this blog, Copy Blogger, um, gosh, I think 2006. Sometimes I'm gonna interrupt you, but yeah, he yeah. actually sold houses yes. in the web. Yeah, absolutely. Like, how, how would he do that? Yeah, so he would do a little bit of simple SEO yes. to rank for his neighborhood that he represented. Yeah. And then he created an email autoresponder that would educate the person who was going to buy property in that community. And so he did a lot of work with people buying their first home and people relocating to this community. Yeah. And so there was two different funnels and he had education for those funnels. And so really from the start of his career as a marketer, he was about educating people, telling them what they needed to know in order to become his customer. When it was time for them to do business, there was all this trust they were totally educated, they knew everything they needed to know, and they could do the deal. And that's really what Copy Blogger is founded on, is this idea of, of you give and you're generous and you educate people and you help them reach their goals. When it comes time for them to make an investment in a tool or more advanced education or hosting or all diff whatever it is for your business, you're the one that they trust. And you're the one that has that rapport because you've helped them with their, you know, their problems and their issues. So that's really what Copy Blogger is about, teaching people how to do that, how to create that business-oriented content that pulls the customer in with yes. search, pulls the customer in with social, and then keeps the relationship going. Almost like a, your content is like a salesperson that works for you 24-7, 365 days a year, and you don't have to pay once you create the content. <laughs> and how did, I mean, that's awesome. And, and how did he, make this you know like this knowledge right about this the beast that i mean the good in a good terms of how the beast that copy blogger is today because copy blogger has how many how many visits a month we have uh, about five hundred thousand unique individual people visit the site every month and by the time you're watching this video who knows how who knows? many right? be, because it goes it's up. something that yeah, organically. it's very organically steady growth again we have about a hundred a little more than a hundred thousand paying customers for different tools that we have, different properties that we have. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, it really is, interestingly enough, um, I think what pulled it together for Brian was product launch formula. I don't, I haven't told you this, but oh my gosh. Brian was a really early um, owner of product launch formula, and he had all the individual pieces, but he didn't exactly see how everything went together. Yes. And the sequence and, um, Jeff was really the one to help Brian understand how the pieces go together. Jeff Walker. Yeah, Jeff Walker. Awesome. So, so we have a we have an old Jeff connection with Copy Blogger. Uh, I, I'm not um, even know. I don't even know if Jeff knows about that. But yeah, <laughs> maybe you know. he does. Maybe he doesn't. But he's so, be happy actually. <laughs> so it's, you know, it, any business this size, we've never taken any venture capital. Yes. We've never had outside investors. 
Um, everything has just been, you know, making quality tools for the audience. Yes. Um, finding out what they need, serving them what they need, making more of what they need. So, you know, it went from being a blog, just a normal blog, two posts a week. Now we're a 30 person company, 100,000, 110,000 customers. Um, multiple lines of business, we sell software, we sell education, we sell hosting, um, and it really just came out of developing the audience and then finding out what they needed. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. And how did you came to, I mean, you were not a co-founder of Copy Blogger, how did you actually, where did you came? I came, in, you... Um, I came in about two, two and a half years after the blog was launched, and Brian was just starting to monetize it at that time. Before then, he had been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes deals. Yeah. Um, and so he was just starting to put a, he built the audience and he was just starting to create the products for that audience. And so, you know, I had the same, I think I had the same values. Um, in some way we're very similar because we have a real passion for teaching um, and a real passion for helping people with their problems. And in some ways we're very different. You know, he's a classic entrepreneur. He's very, you know, he's very impatient. Um, you know, he's very traditional, and I'm very, I'm a long, you know, view. He thinks very big. I think very detailed and one-on-one. Yes. -on -one. yes. And so it's a good, you know, it's just a good balance. And uh, were you, what were you before a co-owner of the um, I worked in, in a, in a, for a company, for a travel company. I actually did content marketing, so you didn't call it content marketing then. And but that's like, what it was. Were you a writer as well? Yeah, I was, I led a team of writers. I managed a team of writers, and we created all kinds of web content, PDF content, um, all kinds of amazing content for our customers about all these great places that they could travel. Okay. So. And how did you actually came to meet Brian? Um, we met at a live event. We okay. met at a live event. We, um, there was an event in Chicago and um, so we had actually been working together and I had been writing for him for a couple of months but we hadn't met face to face. Awesome. So, yeah. And, and I, I, I keep telling people but I, you know I just got an excuse to tell them again the importance of live events is live events, some live events can actually change. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting people live. No, we all work online with live events, so it's just like a little bit of an excuse sure. to reinforce that. <laughs> and wow, now Copy Blogger is what it is. Yeah. 500,000 unique views a yeah. month. And education, world class, as good as it gets maybe, education and content marketing. And a lot of people on the other side of this camera we are looking at, they haven't started content right. marketing. Yeah. And they haven't started because of all the because. You know, right. Maybe they don't believe it, or maybe they think it's too much work. And there's all, all the reasons. But if someone is starting right now, what would be your tips for them? Um, I think, how, um, how, would, how, would people, how would people start content marketing? For, for one thing, you know, this kind of content is great. Maybe a video or a podcast is easier for a lot of people than starting with, with writing. It just depends on what you're good at. Yes. So some people like one and some people like the other. Um, I think you start with understanding who you want to serve. So who do you care about that you want to serve as, as a customer? Who is it you want to bring in to your business to buy from you? What kind of person? What do they care about? What do they believe? And what kind of problems do they have? And then you just, it's very simple. What are their top five problems? Um, that'll be easy for you to solve because you know the topic, you know? So it could be health, could be, you know, um, parenting, it could be money, it could be work, whatever your topic is. What are five quick pieces of advice you could give that perfect customer that would help them have a better situation with your topic, have a better life, have a better relationship, have a better, you know, have better health? So you just start from there, and then you keep, at, and you, as the audience comes, they'll start to tell you what they need. Um, but at first, you know, you just, you make a guess. You just make a guess, and you try, you try things, and you see what, what people respond to. And uh, the one thing, you know, I'm getting into content marketing right now, and I'm surprised yeah. about the results. Yeah. And I've been on probably two months right now on content marketing, and I'm doing a video a day, I'm getting transcribed, and I'm doing maybe, um, yeah, and I'm getting results, which means I'm getting a return on investment on that. Right. But, um, but there are a lot of people that try, and some of my students that try, they write two or three posts or articles, and 
they don't get as much traffic as they were willing to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if that, if and I call this the first, the first hurdle. Yeah. What, what, what do you do? I mean, do you just believe that content marketing will come, or if you get into a situation where you're not progressing, what is your main tip about it? I believe um, some writers they do, right? Sure. I mean, there's two tips. The one is you have to be really stubborn. So one is you need, you like know, stubborn, right? stubborn, right? Like just don't, do not give up. Keep trying, keep trying different angles. So you have to have that. You have to be stubborn. And, and you should be stubborn. But um, once you have that, the best thing to do is to make sure that you have a network of people in your topic. So let's say you, you, your topic is health. Yes. You need to be getting out there and talking with the other people who have a blog in health, uh, in your language, talk to the American health bloggers, you need to have a community of people who have the audience you need. Why? Um, because they are the ones who are going to help you get your first thousand readers or thousand email opt-ins. They're the ones who are going to, they have the audience, you know. So maybe you guest blog, maybe you do an interview like this interview. Um, you interview them, they interview you. Um, even, you know, something as simple as if you have a, a friend who has a very popular health blog and you wrote something really great, you say, you know, would you share on Facebook? Would you let your audience know about it on Facebook or Twitter? Um, that's how you get the momentum. The hardest part you need to understand is the first thousand people. The full, first, first thousand. thousand. And actually, the really hard part is the first hundred. Oh, okay. But who are paying the, attention to you. But then it's first hundred people that visit, first hundred people first, that opt in. I think your the first hundred people that opt in that opt in, that really make enough, they're interested enough in you that they want to know what you have to say. The first hundred opt-ins, yeah. yeah. and you say, and then the first thousand opt-ins. Yeah, so the hundred is the hardest, then the thousand. Once you get to a thousand, people start to spread the word, you know? Oh, okay. Then you, then it's, and not saying it's going to be easy, but you have momentum. So it's just like anything else, it's like, it's like pushing a big, heavy, um, like a truck that has no engine. The hardest part is to get it rolling. Once it's rolling, it's not that hard to keep it rolling. You know, so, so yeah, your network is really important and, and we all have, you know, now you might start, you, your momentum could come from paid traffic. It could come from, that's fine too, but you need something, you need an engine. Yes. So for me, my engine has always been my network. Um, you know, and, and networking so easy online. I mean, you yeah. get on Google Plus, you get on Facebook, you get on Twitter. Um, Go to live events. Live events. I mean, it's so easy in our internet um, marketing world to, to make a connection. You have to be a little bit patient, you know. You have to have something to say. Um, you have to be a good person, I think, in this business. I really think you have to be a good person. You have to be kind. You have to be generous. Yeah, you have yeah. to produce something good that helps people um, okay, uh, and if you're a good person and you do the networking you know you will find that that network uh, and it's funny because you know sometimes you get a great network from somebody who's not in your topic um, for example I don't know if you have this in Brazil but in the US we have these parenting blogs they call them mommy bloggers okay so these women and they write about their family and they write about being a mom um, you know, those people are great for a health coach, right? Because moms are interested in their health. Yes. And they're interested in their kids' health. Yes. You know, so it's not necessarily somebody exactly in your topic. Could be a great fit for you and you could have a great relationship with somebody. But, um, yeah, cultivate your network. Be a good person. Deliver value. Um, and, you know, it takes time. It takes time. Just understand when you're getting started, you're pushing that truck and you're just getting it moving and understand that's going to be the hardest part. So I think if you know that, it's not as frustrating. You know it's temporary. Great. And and if there, there's a, this is a question I get a lot, mm -hmm. and but I would like to hear a viewpoint of this. I, I tell my viewpoint to them, but if it takes time, if it's something that you know I'm going to start right now and maybe I'm not going to see an instant gratification, why should I do it? Why should I just not go to pay traffic? I mean, I'll do paid traffic. I've done my career in paid yeah. traffic, and I, I know the good pros and the cons, but what is your viewpoint? Why, why not just do paid traffic and, and go organic, go like content marketing? The nice thing about organic, and we do almost 100% organic, 
We do very, very little paid traffic. We do a small amount, but it's 3% of our business is paid traffic. Um, After, the, when you get 500 units, <laughs> a thousand units, yeah. I think you can never go pay traffic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, but it's so expensive, you know. The, the thing about an organic presence is nobody can really take your reputation away from you. Um, paid traffic, you're relying on that tool. You're relying on Facebook or Google. Those, particularly those two companies, um, they change the rules all the time. Yep. They're not always very fair. They don't always want to take the time to listen. If, if they make a mistake, it's your problem. Um, the or organic does take longer, no question, it takes longer. But you have something that's very hard to knock over, which is your reputation, you know? Um, when you have a network, when you have links, when you have a presence on social, and every time you post a piece of content, a thousand people share it, it's very hard for anything to knock you over. You become very resilient. So I think it's smart to combine them. I think it's smart to combine them. I, paid traffic is good, but especially you know if it really works, the, the numbers work for your business. Yeah. Paid traffic is great. Um, but if you start building that organic presence, you really build an asset that is very strong. And it's very hard to, it's very, you know, as long as your reputation is good and you um, deliver quality, it's very hard for anybody to ever take you down. Even if Google, you know, if Google, if Google take, changes the algorithm, Google could get hit by a meteor, and we would be fine. Really, we would be fine. Like it could get, it could outside. get wiped off the face of the earth. Something strange could happen. It could just go away, and we would be fine. It would. We would take a hit. You know, we would lose some traffic. Yes. But we wouldn't lose so much traffic that we would be in trouble as a business. Um, so you, 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 your chair is under. It has more legs than right. just one leg, even right. with organic. So people tend to right. believe that all the organic traffic comes from Google, so it's, that's not true. No, I mean, it's actually a huge amount of organic traffic comes from social. Social. You know? Like Facebook. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and the thing is, social changes all the time. So, you know, today we get a huge amount of traffic from Twitter. Maybe next year it'll be Google+, maybe next year it'll be something we don't even, doesn't even exist today. Awesome. Um, but it's because our foundation rests in the people who care about us and who, who learn from us. Those people, as they go around the web, they share. It's not with a platform, it's not with software, it's not with a company, it's with the people who are our audience. That's where our strength is, and that's why it's so hard to, um, you know, it's so hard to knock over, because the people will bring the message where they go. And all we have to do is just keep serving them. Awesome. Yeah. And nowadays, do you write all your content? So we have we post about five or six posts a week, and I usually write for the blog once a week. Okay. Um, a lot of my um, so passion. So you get other people writing for you? Yeah. Yeah. And they do on a paid basis. Um, we have some. Hired? We have a mix. We have a mix. We pay some people, but we also, you know, we have a lot of professional writers who really like to publish guest posts on Copyblogger because it gives them a lot of visibility. Okay, right. A big objection that I get from a lot of people that um, want to start content marketing is that, you know, Eric, I have a business and, yeah. and maybe I'm a doctor and I want to get more clients, but right. hey, I believe in content marketing, and, but I don't want to write or I don't want to film and I would just like to. How would these people, you know, is there a way? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to find good writers. The thing about writers is the thing that makes a person a wonderful writer sometimes doesn't make them a great business person. So you need to find a couple of writers. I would suggest a couple. One is the worst number in business. So if you have one writer you depend on and they leave... Funny, yesterday I was recording a video about the preset of our interview and I said one is the most different. Um, one is the most dangerous yeah. uh, number in the business. And I was telling because I was coming from pay traffic, now right. organic, and right. now you're telling me again, there's another sign, reinforcement, yeah. Yeah. one is the most, uh, yeah. so the same, the same is for writers, right? You hire a couple. Hire writers. a couple of writers, um, create a, an Do ongoing relationship. from writing? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely, we pay very well, but most blogs don't pay very well. But if you have an ongoing relationship with a writer, 
where they know that they're going to produce two, let's say, two blog posts a week for you. Um, you know, then you work out well what makes sense for that person. But the writer, not necessarily, is a marketing expert and or a content marketing expert. Right. How do they, does he actually write awesome posts? That's the, that. That's an interesting question. Um, and for anybody who has a writer who can speak English, that's one of the things that we have is we have free education, so you could send your writer through our free marketing course awesome. and just help them understand. Because the hard part is writing something people want to read. Um, then it's just a question of a little bit of strategy of, you know, what are the benefits of doing business with you? What are the benefits of your approach? All those little copywriting things. It's easier to learn that than it is to learn how to write something people want to read. So it's it's easier to teach a writer marketing than it is to teach a marketer how to write. Okay. Experience. Yes. Um, but, you know, that writer, just because they learn a little bit about marketing, they're probably never going to be a true business owner, they're not going to be an entrepreneur, that's probably always going to be your role. Yeah. And um, their job is just to keep people, give them something good, you know, give them something good to read, give them... Um, so most most content can be done without a lot of marketing so knowledge. So content marketing is a sort of a business unit or a business session of your business that right. can be outsourced. Is mm -hmm. it? That's true. Yeah. Right. Okay, so copy blogger could run without you writing on it. Yeah. So you write it because you add your special taste to it, but you could actually run as a successful business. Yeah. You know, our partner, Brian, the founder of the blog, writes very rarely for the blog now. Um, he only writes when he really feels like it. He has other things taking his attention. Um, he has a great podcast that he's doing, but um, yeah, you know, he turned it over to me, and then I, in turn, have turned it over to other people. Um, to run, to make sure the quality is high, um, and to do most of the writing. So. Cool. I'm going to ask a different, uh, difficult question. Oh, good. You may have an answer, may, may not. But imagine you were thrown away in a different country, different than mm -hmm. the US, with different websites, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. probably 10 years behind the US development. <laughs> Maybe you're thrown to Brazil, in a sense. How would you find writers? And oh, I do have an what? answer for you. Yeah. Oh do. my gosh, yeah, that's awesome. By the way, this is an answer. This is a question that I'm asking you, but actually I want to know the answer. I, I typically tell people that I actually <laughs> interview people <laughs> so I can ask the questions I want to answer. How, yeah. how do you find great writers? This is my favorite you... place. Um, my favorite place is to go to a, a, your university and you look for creative writers. You look for novelists, playwrights, and poets. Really? Students, yeah. yeah. But even if the blogs yeah. are about uh, digital marketing... Uh, dentistry, health, it doesn't matter. Okay, so go because to university. Now, so you're going to have to go through maybe 10 people, because most of them will work. You put an ad there and say, yeah, hey, I'm... Yeah, you put an ad. Okay. I'm looking for, uh, you know, writers to, to write a couple of short pieces every week. And the reason you go to the creative writers is their training is to write with emotion and to write something interesting to start a story with a bang, to, to pull people's attention in, to get them emotionally involved. These are all the things you need to do with copywriting. Because they don't have the facts, right? To get yeah. people involved, they yeah. have to go through emotions, yeah. okay? So, so they're really trained to use language to paint a, a picture, you know, in the reader's mind. And um, now you can go with something like a journalist, but journalists are trained the other way. Journalists are trained only the facts, no hype, no emotion. They almost want to do a infographics. Yeah, them. you know, so the, like I've hired a lot of writers, and my favorite writers that I've hired are creative writers, novelists, and playwrights, and, and then uh, and poets. And then you need to teach them, you know, simple marketing. What's a call to action? Simple, you know, what's a sideways sales letter? That kind of maybe thing. have them run go through your training, right? You have yeah. a writer's training, I believe. Yeah, we have, a, coming. we have a writer's training, but also just the free email, like just the free um, membership community that we offer people. Anybody can sign up for it. Awesome. And uh, the website is? Copyblogger.com. Uh, copy Dot com, yeah. yeah, so you know that that itself would train them. That would really train them. Yeah, it will give them the most important things they need to understand about and for free. For free, awesome. Yeah, and so just you know, pick pick six or seven or eight, have them all do a little writing for you, and there'll be one or two who will really get it, and there'll be a bunch that don't get it. So you just and say do you give them the same topic or? So you say you give, I would just give them, Yeah, I would give them a I would give them a choice, you know, and just sort of. 
If nothing else, you'll get eight good blog posts. They might not all be great marketing, but they'll be great audience rapport, and they'll be interesting, and they'll have SEO value. Um, not every post you write has to have necessarily um, a sales function. A lot of it is just, you know how a salesperson will just have like a coffee with you and just have a conversation? Yes. A lot of your content, is that's all it is. It's just conversation, keep them interested, keep them engaged. So it doesn't all have to be um, selling content. So if you have eight good creative writers write a blog post for you, you probably have eight blog posts that you can run. And, and then you can pick the best. And yeah. Awesome. Sonia, it's awesome to... Having this, to be able to have this conversation with you, have, to be able to have this conversation with someone which is such a level in this game, in such a long time. And I don't know anything about, I mean, <laughs> very little about content marketing. And that's why one of the reasons I came to Boulder as well, to meet you and to, to learn from you. And I think what you said to me was worth gold, literally, because I'm one of these guys that actually take this, go home, and let me find a way to put into practice. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's awesome. That's Thank good. you very much for your generosity. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, from Copy Blogger, Chief Content Officer and Co-Owner, Sonia Simone.